The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 72 Farewell It's all so sudden, Amber whispered, barely loud enough to be heard above the pounding rain. Around her, the other ponies shivered, holding their cloaks and ponchos tight. I know. Maple's voice shook with tension, sorrow and eagerness deeply intertwined in it. This morning, when I woke up, I was just an ordinary pony living in Riverfall. Now, because of a silly little question I asked without thinking, I have a chance no pony in this city has seen for seven years. It almost makes me wonder if it's a good idea, Willow added, subdued. It's easy to dream about something you have no hope of ever getting. Easy to imagine it is more perfect than it really is. Because isn't that the point of dreams? To hope for something better than what you already have? Anything else would be a nightmare. She swallowed. You've had so little time to really consider this, knowing that it's a serious option. I didn't keep us here because I was forced to. You stopped to think, Amber murmured. And while you were doing that, then you were forced to. Face it, you couldn't have gone with Elder and kept us safe. Maple nodded. But what would have happened if we had gone then? If we had rushed in, not waiting to see if it was safe? You never would have had Elder then. She glanced aside at Willow. What would happen if Starlight and I chose not to go right now? Maybe we'd decide to go eventually and nothing would be different than if we left now. Maybe we would decide never to go, or maybe something else would happen to prevent us from ever going. Such as not having a griffin guide to keep you safe, Gerardo asked from the sidelines. I'm aware that this is not my goodbye to partake in, but it bears mentioning that part of Ernby's conditions for allowing this is my own presence. You may very well have to wait another seven years to find another adventurer such as me bound for Ironridge. Ah, Amber walked up to him, eyes big. You've got me to say goodbye to, don't you? We're pretty much besties. Gerardo bowed. Indeed, it was a great pleasure being your partner in crime, as non-serious as every bit of it was. I bid you luck in whatever solo exploits lie in your future. Yeah, you too, big guy. Amber reached out, braving a lack of cover to give the griffin a hug. He returned it awkwardly, and both smiled. Maple took a step forward. Hasty decision or not, I've made it, and Starlight has too. Maybe there will be good things that we'd miss out on, staying in Riverfall. I know I'd miss you too. She took a deep breath and continued. But we'd just as likely miss things in Ironridge. It's supposed to be a majestic city, remember? All we have to do is stick to the upper districts where things are affluent and we'll be perfectly okay. We'll be able to see buildings, meet ponies. And you have my blessing. Willow leaned forward and embraced Maple just as Amber had hugged Gerardo before. Have fun fulfilling both of your dreams, Maple. Being a traveler and being a parent. Too many ponies never even get a single thing they wish for. Despite everything you've been through, Maple, you're lucky. Your life will keep getting better. And I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you, too. I'll see you again someday. She tightened her grip, then released. Goodbye, Maple. I love you. I love you too. Maple pulled away, then turned to Amber. The yellow mare looked as if she wanted to wipe at her eyes, though with muddied hooves it would have done more harm than good. Well, Amber sniffed. I guess this is goodbye, huh? I guess so, Maple sniffed back, standing her ground. Um... Wondering if I should have asked Arambai to let you come too, huh? Her ears folded. I mean, you got your cutie mark for the same reason I did, going on an adventure and all. Nah, Amber waved the hoof, trying her best to act casual. I got plenty of things to do in Riverfall. Tons of ponies know me, so I'd definitely be missed, and we can't leave Willow all alone, can we? A confident smirk grew on her face. Besides, if I leave, who's going to take care of Gerardo's old boat? He gave that thing to me, you know. I bet I can get it fixed up. It's not like the damage is more than cosmetic. Even if it is, pretty big. Maybe when you get back, I'll have it done, and we can go on another adventure? Together? Maple grinned back. That does sound nice. Awesome, even. 
And like I said, I'll be back. If nothing else, I promise you, I'll be back. Someday, somehow, no matter what happens, I'll be back. Starlight stood and watched as they proceeded to embrace, just like the last two times. However, she quickly became aware of a presence beside her and looked up. Hello, Starlight. It was Willow. Or, goodbye. I enjoyed meeting you, even if it was only for a few days. She sighed warmly and added, You're a very special filly who can do a lot of special things. You're strong, determined, focused, and unstoppable when you need to be. It wasn't coincidence that you managed to get here when so many others have failed. Starlight stuck out her lip. Really? Didn't I tell you how I feel about ponies treating me like I'm special? You told me what kind of world you want to live in, yes. Willow leaned down, whispering. But this isn't it. The world is unfair, Starlight. Many ponies prosper who deserve nothing, and some who fall deserve life. You can give it to them. Starlight took a step away, face a mask of uncertainty. What? You have a lot of ideals, Willow murmured. Very strong ones. And the world doesn't make itself perfect on its own. It's ponies who follow their dreams who make it better. And having a perfect world is a very special dream to follow. Do you want a world where decisions you made earlier in your life are never held against you? A world where friends are never separated just because they're different? Make it. Not every pony has a chance to follow their dreams. But out there, in the wide world, you can find it. And if you accept that you have this chance, you can change the world. I believe in you. I... I... Starlight stuttered, looking up at Willow. You want me to do what? Changing the world? How? Hmm. Willow hummed back at her. Change can be good or bad, Starlight, but you can have a say in which way it goes. You get a say whether you deserve it or not. I don't know what it will look like or what will happen once you're out there in Iron Ridge, in the world, but any difference, no matter how small, can be made in a good direction. Can you put yours to use? Too busy processing Willow's words to properly think, Starlight nodded. Okay. Good. I have one other favor to ask you, Starlight. Willow took a step to the side, looking at Maple. Earlier, I asked you to be nice to her. Thank you for that. She needed it. But now? She looked back at Starlight, eyes shining. Protect her for me. Keep her safe. She's eager and will do her best, but you've actually been in danger before and had to survive. Can I count on you? Uh, Starlight blinked. Yeah, don't worry, I'll keep her safe. Thank you. All right, you all. Aaron by his gruff voice interrupted a party of goodbyes, its owner walking dutifully over. Looks like Ganga's about ready to depart, so I hope you've made your peace already. See, before you go, there are a few last-minute things we need to cover. He leaned down, checking something held in his aura. Before I start, any questions? Heads were shaken all around. Right then. Ermbai cracked a hoof against the ground. First off, I gave Gerardo here a brief rundown of some Iron Ridge survival tips earlier. I expect he'll tell you the whole deal, but here's a general rundown. Stick together, keep to the civilized districts as much as possible, do everything you can to avoid making enemies, including getting yourselves roped into alliances, and all that jazz. Naple, Starlight, I don't know much about your combat abilities, but in the event that things go sour, stick with someone who can fight or else get as far away as possible. If any city drama starts happening, get yourselves back to Riverfall as fast as possible. I've also got a friend in the Sky District called Dior who might be able to bail you out of a really bad spot. Oh, and mention me to no one. Got it? Nods. Arambai looked upwards, receiving a face full of rain, and added, One other thing. Never trust a yak. And by the way, he raised a soggy eyebrow at Starlight. Any chance you got that book I lent you? I'd really rather it not go along to Iron Ridge, see? Mutely, Starlight folded open her bags beneath her poncho. Horn shimmering, she levitated Ernby's science book until it hovered at the edge of her rain shadow. Many thanks. 
The stallion took it in a hardened ball of telekinesis, rain visibly bouncing off the edges. Anyway, get to boarding. We got all your cargo loaded and are ready to go at any time. Ganga saluted from behind him on the pier, the boat's dark shadow illuminated in the water behind the spheres of light bordering the walkway. One final look was exchanged between the five creatures and means of goodbye, and they broke apart, three sets of legs moving toward the river. Starlight was levitated aboard in a cloud of purple telekinesis, much to her chagrin. Behind, Maple and Gerardo stumped up the walkway, the former's hoofsteps echoing as if she was made of iron. Together, they turned, seeing three ponies watching from the light of a solitary orb on shore. A mechanical whirring echoed, and the boat's ramp rotated upward, swinging around until it locked into place on the deck. Ganga bowed from near a door to the cabin. It will be drier in here. Yeah, Maple said hollowly. Give me a minute. At least until they're out of sight. The thrum of mana engines intensified below, and Starlight realized the ship's own propulsion had been stabilizing it in place. The dog began to slide back, and soon it was out of reach, the ponies on the shore growing smaller. Amber waved. Maple waved back. I love you! I'll be back! Maple shouted, straining as the ship continued picking up speed, the sound of its wake mixing with the rain on the river and a serious threat to drown out her voice. She leaned out, eyes fixed on the trio on the shore as they retreated further into the haze of rain. I promise! Love you too! Amber's voice faintly echoed, piercing the darkness and static of noise. And then the ship rounded a corner, and they were gone. End of chapter 72